Today I'm going to talk about Bedfordshire Square Tally Ground and how to make the ground so that the tallies stay nice and square when you do the joins. The joins are around these four pins. You have two square tallies coming in and two coming out and it's the join that can make or break the tally ground. So first of all we're going to look at what we're going to do. We're going to make long square tallies using the two pairs of bobbins and you need to make it to fill the space to the next pin. This is a really critical bit. If you make it short it will pull out and make an ugly shaped tally, distorting it very much in the same way if you make a, a leaf tally and you don't make it long enough as well. So the tally needs to fill that space between the two pins. One of the critical things you need to do when planning these square tallies is to work out where you're going to finish with the weaver thread. The weaver thread wants to finish on the outside of the tally, not on the inside, where the first join will be at the four pins. This will make a little bit more sense when I actually show you what I'm going to do. So to finish on the outside, you need to start with the pair on the inside. So on the left hand tally we're going to start with the bobbin in position 3 and this is the one I'm lengthening. As you can see I've made it nice and long and this is the one that will be weaving backwards and forwards between the other three bobbins. And then you weave backwards and forwards between the three threads. Making sure you keep that weaver thread loose when you're going to weave it and only holding it and tensioning it when you've got the other three bobbins under control. That's a really critical thing to make sure you keep those completely under control to tension. Just zoomed out a little bit so you can actually see what's happening with my hands. I'm holding the outside ones and keeping those quite taut when I tension them to maintain the straight parallel sides of the tally. It's particularly the outside ones that you need to pay that attention to. And this tally is going to take a little bit of time to weave because it is a long tally having made it bigger for the video. I hope you can see it all clearly. It's just going to take me a little bit of time to, to weave it. Okay, zoom back in now just so you can see how the tally is coming along. It's getting towards the pinhole now, but you can still see the pinhole quite clearly so it needs to be a little bit longer. One of the main faults that people do when they first do these tallies is to make them too short and it still needs to be a little longer than that. Once you put the pin in and tension it up it really does pack the tally quite a lot and it needs to really fill that space to prevent it pulling out of shape once you work with it. That's about it now. So I'm just going to finish on the left hand side because we started on the right of this tally. And this means that the worker will be secured after the um, passives on the right. Put three twists on and put the pin in. And then just tension it up but leave the worker, the weaver 
loose. And I'm going to leave this long so I remember that this was the one that I worked with. And you can just tension it up around the pin using the other three bobbins. And then just gently tension the worker but holding the right hand pair as well so that it doesn't distort it on the right hand side. Now I'm going to work the other tally off camera and then come back to it. I've now worked the second tally in the same manner as the first one right down to the pin and I've secured it over the pin. This one I started on the left hand side of the tally and worked and finished with the work on the right. Again leave the thread loose to remind me that that is the weaver and not to pull on it. So the middle two pairs I do a cloth stitch and three twists. This is the one that secures the tally then I move across the left side and with the worker still loose very carefully work the cloth stitch and three twists. Zoom back in a little. Still got that worker loose so it reminds me not to pull on it and put the pin in and again tension the three pairs the three bobbins around that pin get rid of the loops and then you gently pull the worker and ease that loop down while holding the pair on the left that don't contain the worker and then this again helps you prevent that tally pulling in very very gently this maintains the nice square tally then do the right hand one again leaving the worker loose so you don't pull on it cloth stitch and three twists and put your pin up your work is still long so you remember not to pull it and tension it up in the same way and then your last join is in the, with the centre two pairs which you've obviously got both of the workers together so you just have to be careful and be really gentle when pulling those threads cloth stitch and three twists and gently ease it up. I've now worked the tally to join in with the edge and I've put the first pin in ready to do the edge join. Again I've left the worker long. I started on the left hand side of the tally so that it finishes on the outside edge away from where the first join is going to be. I meet with the worker from the foot side and I'm going to do the cloth stitch and three twists in exactly the same way as you do in the crossing. And then the worker, the left hand pair, comes back through the edge, through the two passives pin up and then works the edge pin, the change of worker edge, before coming back through the two passives, ready for the second join. What you have to see is the four pins that you would normally get in the middle of the tallies to understand what's actually happening. So I've done the first join and I'm now going to do the second one in the ground for the second pin on the right, cloth stitch in three twists and put the pin up. And then do the join with the worker pair again. Just the same as you would in the middle of the ground. Again being gentle because you've got your worker and you've left it long. And this now means that the worker is actually going to be the worker for the foot side. It's changed over and swapped with the worker from the passives, worker from the edge, and the foot side edge. So I can now shorten that one and continue with the foot side. The two pairs are left out to work the second or the next tally into the ground in the middle of the filling. 
You now just continue to work the centre in exactly the same way as we did the first crossing, with the two tallies and then the crossing again. And exactly the same procedure happens on the right hand side on this sample. I've just done it to draft it up for you to have a go at working this. It works in exactly the same way, but the reverse of what we've just done on the left foot side on the right. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful. Leave me a comment. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe. Lots more videos coming soon. And let me know if there's anything you want to see. Thanks for watching.